Welcome to the first of two videos about the introduction to hypothesis test. This first one is about what I would consider the first two steps of making a hypothesis test. One of them, the hypotheses, I would consider probably the second most important step and probably the second hardest step. So it's one where we need to practice a lot. The second step should be fairly easy and straightforward, but it's sitting here for us to do, so we will tackle it today. Now, when you know that you're doing a hypothesis test, and in this case, the question says write the appropriate hypothesis, so we know we need to do that. You're going to start always with the null first, H naught or H zero. And then below it or to the right of it, put H one or the alternative or H A. Do not switch them up and put the alternative first. Always list the null first. So that's the first step and it's always the same. The second step is to figure out what parameter you are testing. And we have three parameters in this class that we could use. Proportions, means, and standard deviation or variances. Um, means are probably the easiest because they'll usually say the word average or mean. Standard deviations will usually say standard deviation, but proportions don't always say proportion. This question for part A says the majority of all students are girls. They could have easily said the proportion of girls. So this is a proportion question. So we list the parameter P. And I'm going to jump over a step, not go in order but in a, an order that I think makes more sense and ask you to ask yourself, what number are you testing this against? Now, in most questions, they will flat. It will be obvious, but occasionally they will not do that and you have to figure out what the number is. This particularly occurs a lot in section 9.3, the difference of means. But it's happening here in part A, they didn't give you a number, but majority means more than half. And we know half is 0 0.5. So I'm going to put a 0 0.5 beside both of these. And then the last piece is how are you testing the parameter? And that is look for inequality phrases at most less than. Um, sometimes they'll say is not for not equal to, but look for things that are talking about equal to, not equal to, less than, greater than. Now going back to the word majority means more than half, so more than, greater than. Now greater than, and I'll write out the symbol up here at the top, but notice that greater than does not have an equality sign. So when I write this down, it cannot go in the null. The only thing that can go in the null is something with an equal to. For example, like greater than or equal to would go in the null. Less than or equal to, but not just straight out greater than. So it has to go in the alternative or H1. And that was the claim. Most of the time, the one in writing is the claim. And then in the null, you put the opposite. The opposite of being greater than 0.5 is less than or equal to 0.5. If a number is not greater than 0.5, it must be less than or equal to 0.5. And notice that by putting the opposite, we put the equality in the null, that the null gets the equality. Now, what the book does is something slightly different, which is perfectly okay. There are good reasons to do both ways. I'll leave that answer on the board and I'll come um, erase just one piece. What the book suggests to you is that the null should always be just equal to, not greater than or equal to, not less than or equal to, just equal to. Um, again, for a couple of reasons, this is actually very helpful and correct. For some things, this may actually make things a little bit more confusing. So. The thing I want you to know is you need to be familiar with it either way. If you see equal to or if you see less than or equal to in this null, you should be OK with it. I'll leave this one as equal to and I'll do the other two without the equal to. And I'm going to come back and do the nature of the test, but I'm going to go on and do some more hypotheses. So I write down the H naught and the H1. Now in part B, they say average. 
So this is a mean question. So we're testing mu. And in this case, it's very obvious to see that the number that we're testing it against is 100. I would point out the pounds here is important because mu represents the average weight. And as they throw around full-blown hypothesis test questions, you'll get other numbers that are tossed in there. But you know mu has to be something with pounds in this particular question. You do not have to write out the units in your hypotheses. I personally like to do it. It helps me when I get to my um, interpretations in the very last step. Um, but it is not required. You can just write the 100 and leave off the pounds. And in this case, the inequality phrase is clearly written. It's not implied with the word majority like part A was, but the inequality phrase is less than. Now, less than also does not have an equal to, so it goes in the alternative. And the opposite of less than would be greater than or equal to. And the last one. This one talks about the standard deviation. And again, there's only one number. In this case, SAT scores don't have units, so there's no units to put on the 100. So I'll just leave it alone. And in this case, it says the standard deviation is, that is equal to, and that does have equality. So that goes in the null, in the alternative. The opposite of equal to is not equal to 100. Numbers are either equal to 100 or they are not equal to 100. So that gives you a good example of the hypotheses which each of the three different parameters that we have studied. And you see again, we identified the parameter, we identified what number we were testing it against, and we identified how we were testing it and put it in the appropriate hypothesis. And I forgot in the last one, is equal to, so the null this time is the claim. Now the next step, as I said earlier, is a should be straightforward and easy step. You need to determine the nature of the test. That is, is it left tailed, right tailed, or two tailed? Um, you do not have to draw a picture, but I would tell you, I think the picture will make it easier, especially on two tailed tests. So I'm going to draw the picture and then later on I'll come back and do something a little bit different. Now this should not be a surprise to you that I'm drawing a bell-shaped curve. In particular, this is the standard normal distribution. And I know that because proportions, which question part A was about proportions, proportions use the standard normal. That's why we use the norm.env in confidence intervals. So this is the standard normal distribution. And the easiest way to figure out what tail it is is to look at the alternative hypothesis. So in this case, the alternative P is greater than. Greater than should sound like numbers on the right side of a number line. So this is a right tail test. Now, if you do draw the picture underneath that mark, you should label it Z. Again, Z for standard normal. If you do not want to draw a picture, for example, you're trying to type a, a document and you don't want to bother drawing a picture, then you should just say that this is right tailed. Now for part B, I'm still going to draw a bell-shaped curve, but this time it is not the standard normal. It is the T distribution. which we also studied. And I know it's the T distribution because this is means. And when we did confidence interval of means, we use the student's T distribution. Now, again, looking at the alternative, it says less than. Less than, you hopefully know, is numbers on the left side. And in this case, since it's the T distribution, I'll label this with a T rather than the Z that we did in the last question. And again, if you don't want to draw the picture, you can just write out left-tailed. 
Now, standard deviation, we did not do any confidence intervals of. We skipped that section. So this is not something that I expected you to know, but for standard deviation, we use the chi-square distribution, which is a right skew distribution. But what I want to highlight here is looking at the alternative, it says not equal to. And numbers that are not equal to something could be less than the number or they could be greater than the number. So not equal to is a two-tailed test. Whether it's the standard normal or the T distribution or this new chi-square distribution. One thing, and I mentioned that it's important to draw a picture for the two-tailed test. Part of why it's important is because it is not obvious which of these two marks you should label. It was two-tailed, there are two marks. Um, pick one and label it. And since this is the chi-square distribution, I'll use the chi-square symbol. But pick one and label it. And in the next step, you'll calculate that number and then you'll put it in the right place, which may mean you move it to the other side or it may mean you get to keep it where it was. And again, if you don't want to draw the picture, for right now, it's enough to say that it's two-tailed. Please look for the next video as it relates to this one. It uses these same three examples, but it does some different things with hypothesis test. As always, if you've got questions, please email me.